Good evening. This is 2020 Church. I'm Pastor Larry Enriquez. We're going to uh, do a song. I'm going to do a song here uh, that we can uh, get our hearts and minds uh, in, um, in a place of, of hearing what God has to say to us. And I want to talk to you a little bit about, uh, about shouting, <laughs> about joy, and about singing. And so we'll talk about that in just a minute. Look at, at some scriptures that would encourage you. Uh, but we're going to look at the language of heaven and what should be part of our language here too. So here's a... Song, but relevant. Comfort, comfort. God's peace is come. Sins are pardoned. Victory's won. Fill the valley. heard that song fill the valleys uh, it's an it's an old original song from quite some time ago but really it is, it is about about filling life with with praises with hallelujahs uh, with praises to God because he is life and all things good come from him and all life has its breath from him and so that idea of filling life with song is something that's near to my heart uh, and I hope it's near to yours but I realize that as we're all apportioned gifts and talents and and all that uh, that we're all uh, apportioned differently as to how we might uh, think about music uh, whether we're trained listeners or or trained uh, musicians of some sort or or another um, 
but music is a part of life here on earth and it certainly is part of, of heaven life. Uh, we're a loud family. <laughs> we just are. I mean, uh, my all my girls can scream pretty loud. They love screaming. Their kids consequently love screaming. Uh, their grandma loves screaming. Uh, the, I, I have a son-in-law that's very loud. When he's talking to you, he's shouting at you. Uh, we, we're, we're just loud that way. Uh, I tell our neighbors, we're the loud family. And they go, oh, we love it. We hear you guys all the time. So they don't go, oh, no, we can't hear you. They just say, oh, no, we love it. We hear it all the time. We're loud. Uh, uh, I, I tend to be probably one of the quieter ones of the group, and I can be loud. Uh, so... Uh, that said, you know, we're preparing for my daughter Larissa's uh, wedding uh, to Steve, Stephen Dubois. And, and as we're doing so, uh, I just booked a DJ uh, for that uh, evening. And, and our band's going to play a little bit before that uh, DJ comes out. And so we're all combing through songs to see if they'll cut the mustard and make the list. Uh, for the, for the wedding, I I heard my son and son-in-law the other night just going through all kinds of songs, seeing if they're going to cut the mustard. Uh, earlier, I, I I looked out there and I could see my my wife and and the girls writing down songs from uh, a number of songs that they were playing this morning. A song is a part of our lives, and really, it's a part of yours whether you're a player, a singer, or not. But I hope that you learn to enjoy song as it'll be one day. Uh, a part of, of the language of, of heaven. Uh, the, the, the Bible says this in Psalm 33, sing to him a new song, play skillfully with a shout of joy. It, it implies here in, in Psalm 33, 3, that singing and shouting with joy are, are similar activities, uh, maybe parallel activities here on earth. In fact, when we read about singing in the Old Testament, uh, we, we actually find it mingled in with, with the word shout. And so and so shouting and singing is a part of the hallelujahs, is part of the, the chorus of recognizing and, and and you know bowing before the God of heaven and earth. Uh, in Ezra 3, 10 through 13, it says in the scriptures we find that sometimes it's a combination again of this singing, weeping, shouting. Here's what it says. When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, by the way, this is the priest who, who went back uh, uh, at the time of Nehemiah to rebuild the temple on the walls, etc. And now it's being built. When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests in their vestments with the trumpets and the Levites with cymbals took their places to praise the Lord as prescribed by David, king of Israel. With praise and thanksgiving, they sang to the Lord. It's, it's like this, this really intense glory to God through our shouts and our praises. The Bible says that God is good. Here's what it goes on to say in verse 11 there of Ezra. He is good. His love toward Israel endures forever. And all the people gave a great shout of praise to the Lord. That's just loud. They're going to be loud in their praise. They didn't say anything about good singing or in tune singing. Although the Bible does speak of those who were gifted in that. And, and they had choruses and choirs and people who sang. But here it says that they, that they just shout the praise and praises to the Lord. Because the foundation of the house of the Lord was built. So out of their joy, out of the center of their joy comes praise. Now, you know, let me just take a quick little sidebar that I hope that out of this, that we continue to hone our ears, our lips, and our lungs towards giving God praise. Whether we sing it, whether we play it, whether we shout it. That we would take time to recognize God through the very breath that we have. You don't notice that shouting and singing and speaking praise, that all of that is from our breath that he gives us. The Bible says here, with praise and thanksgiving, they sang to the Lord, he is good. <laughs> 
Here's what it says in verse 12. But many of the older priests and Levites and family heads who had seen the former temple wept aloud when they saw the foundation of this temple being laid, while many others shouted for joy, shouting and weeping and singing. It was loud, but all unto God. What interesting this is when we think about how joy is expressed to God because of who God is and because of what he does. <laughs> it says that when Jesus entered Jerusalem, right in on a colt, that the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices. So, you know, when somebody says, you're the loud family, I say, yeah, we are. Uh, you know, I hope that our loudness is directed towards who God is in our lives, that we're loud because we love God. <laughs> Uh, I, I have somebody who, who has said to me, you know, someone told me in church that I need to be quiet because I'm just shouting and not singing. I said, well, I, we all have our own ears, I guess. I said, you just keep praising God. Sometimes maybe we'll even offend others. Well, we shouldn't be shouting and singing to offend, but certainly we should be praising God. And if it gives offense, well, let's just get through that. But let's give our breath to God. Here's what it says in Ephesians as we think about, again, joy and praise, be filled with the Spirit, Ephesians 5, 18 and 19, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. All that is about the breath of a, a concerted and beautiful noise. You know, we're outside. You can hear it because there's noise. There's a plane going overhead. There are, there are uh, helicopters going overhead. Uh, we're not that far from a little private airport. Uh, there's always noise. There's always sound. But may we learn to bring the sound of our lives from our hearts to God. Even even what's flying overhead and making a, making a noise in, in this setting it is something that really comes from the hand of God. In other words, an ability for somebody to be creative enough, to have vision enough, to, to build something that would fly up in the sky is, is like from God. And we want to give praise to God with our voices, with our breath. In Colossians 3.16, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you <laughs> in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. It's a message that we find in the scriptures. In Psalm 33, sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten-stringed lyre, sing to him a new song, play skillfully and shout for joy, for the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. It's talking about, about the heart of God and who God is, and that out of this ought to come this expression of loudness, an expression of God is everything. And everything else that we enjoy and have and participate in is from his hand and from his breath. May we pursue God with everything we have. You know, the first commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your might, all your soul. Why not? He's the giver of it. Sing praises. Shout for joy to the Lord. Maybe we ought to be crying with joy. In fact, the other day, somebody said, you know, uh, I, I, was, I was crying and my daughter came in the room and, and thought I was crying for a different reason, but no, I was crying for joy. Sometimes our tears are tears of joy. The Bible tells us that the Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. And by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, their starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars. He puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. The Lord 
foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever, the purposes of his heart through all generations. You know, it's, it's another kind of message, but I want to just say this, that, that God has plans for you to grow you, to make you more like Jesus. And no one, nothing can thwart that plan, his plan of goodness for you, his plan of righteousness for you. Shouldn't that bring out shouts of joy? Songs of joy. And I get it. Some of us were not given to singing. You know, we go back to the idea of fruits. You know, fruits, or rather the fruit of the Spirit is, is a, a cultivating of Christ-likeness in our lives that comes from walking with the Holy Spirit. I don't find any of the fruit being singing. I find that joy is part of the fruit. Singing is an expression of that. And I say that because some have a gift of singing because they're born with it. And somehow God gives us that. I don't see it list listed not only as a fruit. I don't see it gift the gift of singing anywhere in the Bible. But because we're all called to sing. Now, some are naturally gifted as God has given it to them through their DNA or, you know, whatever the graces are that God gives us. Some are gifted in drawing and some are gifted in planning and some are gifted in creating and some are gifted in singing, in playing instruments. There are some people I know who love singing, who love playing an instruments, but they're not gifted per se. They work hard at it. You know, uh, there's a couple stories, just real quick. These are, again, kind of sidebars. I just thought of it. Oral Hershiser was a, was a wonderful uh, a pitcher for the Los Angeles Dodgers. You know, he was cut uh, from his high school varsity baseball team, and he was cut from his college baseball team. He's, he, he's uh, going to be a Hall of Famer, and, and, and you know what? He worked hard at it. Was he gifted at it? I don't know. But he worked so hard at it, they became good at it. I know others that I've read about, professionals who weren't really that gifted, but they just worked hard at it and became good at it. They weren't naturals. And some will work really hard and they'll never be that good at it, but they'll, they'll be as good as they can be. Michael Jordan, some say the greatest basketball player that ever lived, was cut from his high school basketball team. But he worked hard. In fact, I read somewhere that, that he said, I would sometimes just close my, my eyes and imagine the high school list of the boys that made it and my name not being on it. And it inspired me to work harder. <laughs> well... To each his own, but you know what? All that to say this, work hard at being a God praiser. Work hard at being a God praiser. Whether you're gifted with music or musicianship or not, work hard at being a God praiser. There's a passage in the book of, by the way, Read Psalm 33 because it has much more to, to say to us about praising and singing and, and shouting, really. But there is a, a passage in, uh, in Revelation chapter 5. I'm gonna, I didn't print it here, so I'm going to look it up here in this particular uh, Bible rendering. But it, it's, it's a very interesting passage. But let, let me read here. We're going to close with this passage in chapter 5. And I saw a scroll in the right hand of the one who was sitting on the throne, a scroll with writing on the inside and on the back and sealed with seven seals. A mighty angel with a loud voice was shouting out this question, Who is worthy to break the seals on this scroll and to unroll it? But no one... And all heaven or earth or from among the dead was permitted to open and read it. Then I wept with disappointment 
because no one anywhere was worthy. No one could tell us what it said. But one of the 24 elders, not an angel, but one of the 24 elders, said to me, Stop crying, for look, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered and proved himself worthy to open the scroll and to break its seven seals. Of course, this is Christ. Uh, stay with me here. And again, I'm not here to teach you the, the book of Revelation chapter 5 would be here for, you know, we could do it as a series, but in light of praising and the language of heaven being praises. In verse 6 it says, I looked and saw a lamb standing there before the 24 elders. By the way, this passage gets really odd. I'm going, oh my God, I don't know what this looks like. I can read the words, but still can't imagine what it looks like. It doesn't make sense to me, but doesn't need to. I'm but a human. But let me read this to you. I looked and saw a lamb standing there before the 24 elders in front of the throne and the living beings. And on the lamb was wounds that once had caused his death. He had seven horns and seven eyes, which represent the sevenfold spirit of God sent out into every part of the world. He stepped forward and took the scroll from the right hand of the one sitting upon the throne. And as he took the scroll, the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each with a harp and golden vials filled with incense, the prayers of God's people. They were singing. You think that before they went to heaven, they were all skilled harp, harpists? <laughs> I don't think so. But there's something about heaven now that is appointed to them to play an instrument and to sing. They were singing him a new song with these words. You are worthy to take the scroll and break its seals and open it, for you were slain and your blood has bought people from every nation as gifts for God. And you have gathered them into a kingdom and made them priests of our God. They shall reign upon the earth. They're singing these things. It's the language of heaven. Well, we'll talk about this some more another time. But I want you to, to not be afraid to be loud for Jesus. To make him the center of your life. That we might give Again, shouts and praises of joy, sometimes even tears of joy. We might sing as those who sing in heaven, as those who gather around this incredible, incredible person of Christ, the resurrected Christ in heaven, and they sing to him and they play to him with the angels. What a beautiful picture that is, as difficult as it might be to picture some of this because it speaks of things that are hard to imagine. But here on earth, till God takes us home, may we have ears, may we have eyes, may we have a breath given to praise. Let's praise him with all that we have. Well, God bless you. Thanks for spending some time with me here, uh, whether it's this evening for you or another time. Just thanks for being here. I hope to see you Sunday at church. We're going to praise him with song. See you then.